Everyone and welcome back to Post Time from Fort Erie Racetrack on Your TV Niagara. Thanks for following along this year on FortErieRacing.com. Hi again, everyone, and welcome back to Post Time from Fort Erie Racetrack, only here on Your TV Niagara. On the program today, you're going to notice the rain played havoc, causing us lots of scratches and the loss of the turf races. So all of the races on today's show will be contested over a very sloppy and muddy looking main track. But the show does go on as always. We want to thank you for following along this year on FortEerieRacing.com for the live stream now in HD every Monday and Tuesday, first post at 1.10 p.m. And our replay show every Thursday evening at 8 p.m right here on your TV Niagara. Thanks a lot again for being with us. Keep up with all the action at FortErieRacing.com. It's now post time from Fort Erie Racetrack only on your TV Niagara.
And they're off for a mile and 70 yards. Texas boy broke out of there sideways to the outside rail. And it's Dr. Robert that looks first for the lead. Right along the inside, Soul and Spirit, Giant Balls of Fire is going to be attending. Up into the first turn, Dr. Robert designated to set the tempo. Giant Balls of Fire is right there keeping good tabs. And along the inside is Soul and Spirit. Two more lengths to Sparkish, another two to New Baby Daddy. And after a horrific beginning, Texas Boy runs rank and to the rear of the field. They move over to this Fort Erie backstretch. Dr. Robert designated to set all of the early tempo, keeping tabs from two lengths back. Second on the outside is great. Balls of fire, giant balls of fire, that is. Sorry to Jerry Lee Lewis about that. Soul and Spirit runs along the inside in third. And then it's back to Sparkish, spaced in the backfield, our new baby daddy. And Texas Boy has never been close. Into the final turn there go, and Dr. Robert sets all of the tempo. The opening half mile was run in 48 seconds. That's a really quick tempo. Dr. Robert making it over giant balls of fire who is yet to kick in. Now Juan Crawford starts to go to work, and he's asking giant balls of fire to make up the last three, four lengths. Dr. Robert has been strong and makes the turn on a lead of three or four lengths. 1 12 and 4 the three quarter time. Dr. Robert, the top end target. Giant balls of fire. Still four or five lengths to make up. Soul and Spirit along the inside. New Baby Daddy came up into the front four. Dr. Robert goes all the way in the first at 9 to 2. Dr. Robert and Helen Vanek to the front would just not be caught. Soul and Spirit tries to hold off New Baby Daddy for second and third. And Giant Balls of Fire was only fourth best as Dr. Robert goes all the way in the Monday opener in Fort Erie in 144 and 1. They're off. And Flashman blew the start and is about five lengths back of the field. Omi's boy, and you know you like it, swiftly away. Brady O'Brady came out to guard third along the inside. Lewinsky's Wild Affair is off the pace from fourth. And Flashman with an uphill climb after a tardy beginning. They duel up front. On the inside, holding sway is favorite Ami's boy. And on the outside, you know you like it. Brady O'Brady is a closer third. Two more lengths to Lewinsky's Wild Affair from fourth. And Flashman, about seven more lengths of separation back of the group. They run down inside the quarter pole. Suddenly, Brady O'Brady is a presence right along the inside. Going to get an inside run on Ami's boy. Through quarters of 22 and 1. Big speed there on the inside. Brady O'Brady at 9 to 1. Looming bold. He's got Omi's boy. Brady O'Brady and Howard Newell pull the race to upset. Omi's boy made the speed and had to stay for second. Lewinsky's Wild Affair saved third. And Flashman was fourth as Brady O'Brady wins the race to upset in 58 1 fifth. They're off, and they've come out in a good line. 
Ibarakim emerges from the outside with odds get even and Debois now makes the early speed. Debois is on the outside of odds get even along the backstretch and Hedeman tracks along by two more lengths. Then Hardlock Charlie and uh, on the outside is Ibarakim to the rear of the field and forced to run three wide. Odds get even and Debois are having at it on the turn. Debois and uh, odds get even these two on the outside, Debois trying to forge on by. Tough along the inside still as odds get even. Sizzling 22 and 1. Nothing settled up top. They come into the stretch. Finally, it's a clear lead for Debois. Debois over odds get even through the stretch. Debois is clear, but it's just a length. Odds get even has still not gone away and is re rallying. Debois and odds get even set down to decide this. Hardlock Charlie is third. Odds get even comes back to win. Uh, came back to win, holding off Debois, then Hard Luck Charlie, and Ibarakim saved fourth. Hedeman was last to finish as odds get even battles back in 59 and 1. Talking Leaves is in. Stand by for a start. Race four at the post. They're off. And they came out of there in a terrific even line. Down the middle of the course is flat out fabulous with early speed. Best of all is party dress right there along the inside. And well, you know, is going to be forwardly placed. Talking Leaves is uh, looking to get near the early action. Then Musical Flight on the outside with Speedy Runner and Princess Fiona was the last one away. Into the turn, Party Dress making the most of the post one draw luck. And right there looking a little doubled up as well you know, Musical Flight is out widest of all on the flank of Flat Out Fabulous. They come this way to the top of the stretch after a battled out first quarter of 22 and four. And into the stretch they will come with Party Dress having set all of the tempo. Still the top end target. Then flat out fabulous. Out on the grandstand side is Musical Flight. Party Dress is going to show the short way home. Party Dress at seven to two. Wired that field with authority. Flat out fabulous second. Musical Flight was third and Princess Fiona saved fourth with Party Dress going the route in 59 and one. They're off. And they've all come out in a really good line there with no extensions. Just gliding up there, pulling Melanie Pinto to the lead. Moon Rover is going to be attending. And from the outside, Stormy Susie is not far off, but widest of all in this front trio. Then it's back to one for Nikki on the outside flank of Princess Morrow. They go this way over to the back stretch. No extensions on the inside. Moon Rover on the outside. Four more lengths back to Stormy Susie along in third. Second to last is one for Nikki and saving ground in on the fence, fifth and last to arrive in the backstretch, Princess Morrow. After a, a front quarter 
of 23 seconds deceptively quick there. Moon Rover still challenging, no extensions. Stormy Susie lays off the speed. She's about six lengths back in third. Princess Morrow has been taking an exclusively rail run and one for Nikki is going to go three wide out around a stalling Stormy Susie. So they go this way to the final turn. No extensions in Moon Rover. Here comes Princess Morrow after a well-measured rail run and saving ground. Then one for Nikki and and Stormy Susie has no more to offer. No extensions. The top of the stretch leader, Princess Morrow, has had a savvy rail run. And now she is almost on to level terms with no extensions after speed of 47 seconds and three quarters in 12 and three. And it's Princess Morrow after the best trip of all gliding to the lead and widening away her advantage. Princess Morrow through the stretch is widening away. You got sixes on top of the ticket. Head to the cashier's line for a well-ridden out. Princess Morrow, much the best. No extensions made the speed was second. One for Nikki, third. Moon Rover was fourth. And Princess Morrow, a well-ridden out winner to win at a mile and 70 yards in 143 and two. All lined up and they're off and they've come out in a good line with Thor's Thunder and Helen Vanek going to seize the moment right alongside that one is up and Adam head kitten was checked and taken back time to dance rolls up into the front four then it's spinning Piper in the center of the course on the flank of Red Mercury and back of the group goes Kilkenny Prospect along the back stretch uh, just in behind stone away they make their way over to the turn with Thor's Thunder on the inside in time to dance on the outside and running up into the front trio, but outside is Red Mercury on the flank of Head Kitten. There's the front four, about five more lengths to up and at him. And then Stone Away is passed along the inside by Spinning Piper and last on the outside, Kilkenny Prospect to come over to the top of the stretch. They'll turn for home with Thor's Thunder and time to dance and rolling widest is Red Mercury through speed of 22 and two and 45 and 2 and Thor's Thunder is still going. Thor's Thunder and Helen Vanek with her patented style has one to hold off and that's Red Mercury on the grandstand side. Thor's Thunder, Red Mercury endeavoring to close in. Thor's Thunder goes the short way home by a quarter of a length to hold off Red Mercury. And then it's back to Head Kitten and time to dance and up and at him way back looking for fifth as Thor's Thunder, the Helen Vanek way in 111.
There's the live shot, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back for Live Racing 2020. From Fort Erie Racetrack in the Fort Erie, Buffalo, Niagara Falls region, all set for Tuesday live racing action at Fort Erie Racetrack. Less than 35 minutes to first race post time at 1.10 p.m. We remain close to spectators this year. Thank you for understanding and for following along with us as possible on hpibet.com, fortereracing.com. However, and wherever you are able to be following along, thanks for being with us for 2020 live racing action from Fort Erie Racetrack. The jackpot high five carryover will not be won this day uh, because of the rains which got heavy just before 11 a.m. And that has scrubbed the turf course racing for this program. So we will be carrying over that giant pool you're seeing on the screen, more than $77,200, to the last race next Monday. The jackpot high five carryover, way north of $77,000, that carries in its entirety to the final race next Monday. Our live racing schedule this year, we're with you for live action each Monday and Tuesday, 1.10 p.m. with the live pre-race show you're now viewing on the air each race day at 12.35 p.m. Eastern. Become a member today of HPIBet.com and you will get $100 when you bet $100. HPIBet.com is yours to join for free when enrolled, you will be automatically into the HPI Bet Rewards program. You can watch up to four tracks at the same time while wagering on almost 500 tracks from around the world. And you can wager online or on site at any time. Check it out. It's free to join HPIBet.com. Our weekly highlights and replay show is on Your TV Niagara every Thursday at 8 p.m. That's found at cable channel 700 on the local Kojiko system in Fort Erie, Niagara Falls, Font Hill, Welland, and the entire Niagara region cable channel 700 every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. It's post time from Fort Erie Racetrack on Your TV Niagara. For the live stream, the replays, the racing schedule, the Ashley Mayu free tip sheet, statistics and much more and now live in HD. Check us out at FortErieRacing.com. Now stand by with your pens and pencils. Here come the changes. In the first race, Vet Scratch of number four, Get Saucy. In race two, three, SEAL Team two, races two pounds over. Number four, Loquacious, one pound over. Stewards Scratch of number five, Cape Nero. Race two is the first of this program's turf races off the turf. It will be contested a mile and 70 yards on the main track in race two. In the third race, one Lynch's Gimme, two pounds over. Two Mintaka Bell races one pound over. The fourth race, off the turf, mile and 70 yards on the main track in race four, where number three, win, lose, or straw, races three pounds over. Four, Madame Bovary, two pounds over. Six, Sweet Society, two pounds over. Steward's Scratch of seven, Vin Pearl Valentine, will not go. No changes in race five. Race five will go as programmed. In the sixth race, one, see you at the finish line, three pounds over. Number six, summer retreat to race two pounds over.
out of the seventh race, four scratches, including three, Giovanna Ponti, five, Henson's Girl, six, Annie O'Schiller, seven, She's Ten the Hard Way, that's three, five, six, and seven, scratched out of the seventh race, the seventh race to be contested at six and a half furlongs on the main track. And again, uh, just an explanation about what has happened because of the uh, heavy rain that came just before 11 this morning, washing out the possibility of the turf races today. As you just saw in the changes, we lost uh, over half of the field for the seventh and final race this day. The uh, upside of that is we have a great race on the program with a full field just before that. In the sixth race, a very hotly contested field of nine we anticipate. In that sixth race, we'll turn into the starting gate for a very entertaining event in the sixth race. We also want to mention on that seventh race, instead of mentioning which of the wagering profiles are gone because of the scratches, we can only say in that seventh race that win and exacta will remain only. That's the seventh race today. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to wager successfully win and exacta only on that seventh race. And that uh, building jackpot high five carryover, more than $77,200, that will carry over in its entirety to the final race next Monday, August 10th. So good luck with all of your wagers today and let's get into the meat of the handicapping session. In the first race, the claiming field to travel six and a half furlongs. Number three, Hilltop Harmony is my top selection in this first race. The combination of uh, rider Kirk Johnson, who you saw on the replays just moments ago, building up his win total again yesterday, this time teaming up with uh, trainer Julie Mathis, who is having an outstanding season here at Fort Erie Racetrack. I do, in the uh, pre-race handicapping sessions, go with a lot of last-time winners. That is the situation for Hilltop Harmony coming right back after a wide-open lengths win. Our uh, track handicapper, Ashley Mayu, goes for good reason with number five, CJ's Flair. I made this one a top selection last time. Uh, she did not really threaten for the top prize, so I've jumped off her bandwagon. Maybe I should have given CJ's Flair one more try. That's going to be my second pick, though. And the uh, morning line of Bill McGurr also concurs with Ashley that CJ's Flair will be their top selection. I, though, am sticking with Hilltop Harmony in the hopes that the 3-1 to morning line or thereabouts will hold up for win wagers on that first race. Race two moved off the turf, mile and 70 yards on the main track. Number three, SEAL Team 2, my top call here, in obvious, strong, current form. With a win and a couple of runner-up finishes most recently, Brian Shane gets limited opportunities in the saddle here at Fort Erie Racetrack, but watching day by day here, I really like the way Brian rides. He seldom has one covering excess ground. He always has them in position for the money that they should get. And I really like this combination of Sharon Chicado, who sent out a couple winners again here yesterday and in recent days, having an outstanding 2020 meet. Here in Fort Erie is the shed row of Sharon Chicado teaming up with Brian Shane on SEAL Team 2 in race two. The only descending view is from the daily racing form. Prison Padre tracked the pace well last time was a close third, but the rest of us are going to stay on SEAL Team 2 in race two. The third race is six furlong test. Number six, Lil's Turn is my top call, and it's not going to be everyone's uh, favorite top call. As you can see, four to one is the morning line, so not even close to being a morning line favorite is Lil's Turn. But I liked this one coming back from Woodbine after a troubled trip. Check out the trip note and you'll see this one got herded at the start last time. And then she came back to way outrun and overachieve from her 24 to 1 odds. 
That particular day up at Woodbine, now Lil's turn for John Sims and Melanie Pinto returns to the friendly confines of Fort Erie. I'm expecting good things from Lil's turn in race three and maybe at a price. Ashley in the daily racing form going with number four, Snell Flicka, Gary Chidobiak, having a solid season with lots of top three finishes here. I'm not sure Snell Flick is ready to uh, step out and beat them all here, though, in this third race. The morning line of Bill McGurr goes for good reason with another one I like in the race, Lynch's Gimme for Julie Mathis and Helen Vanek. And look at the consistency on Lynch's Gimme, four for four in the top three from four starts this year. Love that kind of consistency. So my top two will still remain Lil's turn and Lynch's gimme in race three. On to the fourth race, off the turf. It's going to be a mile and 70 yards of main track action. Number seven, Vin Pearl Valentine was scratched. My top selection is Sweet Society, number six, for the combination of uh, Mike DiPaolo, who doesn't send very many starters into battle here in Fort Erie. He's hired Emil Ramsamy to ride this one. And uh, probably the predominant reason for picking Sweet Society on top is the half price reduction in claiming tag level. You could go a lot of ways though. This is one of the most wide open races of the entire program. Ashley Mayu, she goes with number one, no ring picking up first-time Lasix for trainer Kevin Attard. And uh, Kevin Attard, we don't see him ship very many into Fort Erie. You better pay attention when he does. Of course, he's having an outstanding run of success with his great mare, Starship Jubilee. Congratulations, Kevin, on another monumental victory for Starship Jubilee uh, last week at Saratoga. I watched her win many times over the last winter months at Gulfstream Park. and. Uh, one of the world's greatest ever $16,000 claims to Kevin Attard with Starship Jubilee. That has nothing to do with no ring, but I did want to make mention of Kevin Attard shipping one in to race this program here at Fort Erie. Number two, Marvell looks solid enough to uh, perhaps close out the ticket with a minor class relief there. Lots of different opinions to uh, consider. Number five, Hippie Chick sent down by Francine Villeneuve. That's the top call of the daily racing form. Ashley goes with no ring. I'm staying with six sweet society on the half price reduction in the fourth. Whatever you take there, be sure and demand a good price. It's wide open. On to race five. We have a claiming field to run five furlongs. Number one, midnight snack attack, my top call. If you watched yesterday's program, uh, either as it happened or on the replays, you saw Helen Vanek piling up more wins in front-end fashion. So that's what we expect from Midnight Snack Attack again here in race five, going for three in a row against comparable company at this $8,000 price tag level. The only dissenting view is from the daily racing form, going with Big Classic. For Melanie Pinto and Joe Humber and owner Joy Elkins, otherwise the rest of us expecting another patented Helen Vanek strong front end try with the front end minded midnight snack attack. We will know by the time race five comes up whether the track is playing to speed this day. And if it is, heads up for the midnight snack attack. On to the sixth race, full field of nine here to load into the starting gate at five and a half furlongs. Whenever Mr. Chang races here, we stand up and pay attention. The uh, charismatic and feel-good story of 2019 around Fort Erie Racetrack, and he's back in to go. Not going to be my top call here. He's going to be my second choice. I'm looking for Summer Retreat. Julie Mathis and Helen Vanek have a last start winner here. But in an interesting twist, Pierre Mailhot bails for Mr. Chang. So maybe the rider is doing a little bit of the handicapping for us. I'm the only one with that view on summer retreat with Helen Vanek taking over from Pierre Mailhot, who instead went down to the great veteran, Mr. Chang. Now, Ashley, the Daily Racing Forum and Bill McGurr's Morning Line 
all going with uh, my third choice on top. That's marriage counselor Dil DeRusso has yet to send out a winner here this year, but maybe marriage counselor on the class relief angle will get the job done in race six. Another good contest at hand there with a, a big field of nine to go five and a half furlongs in race six. And the seventh race off the turf, and uh, there are four stewards scratches excused from racing because of the move onto the main track. They were all going to be selections of mine almost. Giovanna Ponti, Annie O'Schiller were going to be uh, top selections of mine, so we are left with just a field of three, and I'm going to go with the number two, I Miss You, on the top of the ticket. I Miss You may have found a field that uh, she can beat here with only two to handle. Uh, Glorious Freedom has a win just two starts back and now drops back again to the 3000 level and uh, may be able to turn the tides here on I Miss You and Our Petunia. And as a result of the uh, steward scratches being off the turf there for the seventh race, win and exacta wagering only. Win and exacta only on the seventh race. And again, the jackpot high five carryover, $77,000 plus. That will carry over in its entirety to the last race next Monday, August 10th. Good luck with all of your selections. 19 minutes to first post at 1.10 p.m. As always, follow along at FortErieRacing.com. Ashley Mayhew's tip sheet. I was talking a few moments ago about Kevin Attard. Some great statistics turned up by our Ashley Mayu on the free tip sheet today concerning no ring and trainer Kevin Attard in the fourth race. And Ashley will be along to reiterate that as well with her invaluable insights and selections. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Live Racing 2020 from Fort Erie Racetrack. Seven races this Tuesday at Fort Erie will kick things off here in race one. A $3,000 claiming event for Fiddlies and Mares set to go six and a half furlongs over the dirt. The number five CJ Splair made her first local start here last time out. 
was able to really rally from off the pace to finish third, beaten by just a length and a half in the end. And I think if this one can be in the race earlier, she should be tough to beat. And I think also getting that extra eighth of a mile should be to her advantage. Another one I will use is the number two alert kitten. Now she disappointed last time out. She was several lengths behind CJ's flair last time out when she finished fifth, beaten by nine total. But looking at her other two performances this year at Fort Erie, she had a second in her first start since January. And then in her following start, she won and she drew clear by five and three quarter lengths in the end. She was able to stalk in there. Kind of looking at that race, that was at today's distance. Now I think if she can get a similar setup, she has a shot in here. I'm just not sure she can win. Finally, the three Hilltop Tarmany. This one took them gate to wire last time out, drew off by almost nine lengths in the end, and she was able to get to the front at the mile and 16th distance and really set a tempo to her liking. Now they're going to cut her back to six and a half. Looking at some others in here, she may be able to get on the lead again, but I think that the two is going to sit right off of her and maybe apply some pressure early on.
Because of the sloppy conditions, horses will be coming directly from the paddock to the racetrack. The riders are up. They're on their way out for the first race. Introducing the field for the first race on Post Parade in Fort Erie. Silly Simone is number one, trained by Ravendra Ragunath for owner Sheila Mohan, and in the irons, Mark Lee Buchanan. One Crawford to ride for Fortunato Galati and Michael Cohen. Two is Alert Kitten. Hilltop Harmony is number three, conditioned by Julie Mathis for Six Brothers Stable. With the mount to Kirk Johnson. Number four was a vet scratch. CJ's Flair is number five, campaigning for Elliot Sullivan with Chris Husbands. Six is Blue Collar Romance, races for owner-trainer Sharon Chicago, and the writer is Helen Venick. Billy and Mare claiming field for the first race. They'll run six and a half furlongs on the main track in the start of the rolling pick threes and rolling daily doubles. There's Superfecta, Trifecta, Exacta, Win Place and Show on the first from Fort Erie.
at Fort Erie, the riders now instructed to take their horses back to the six and a half furlong starting point for the first race. They've reached the starting point. Silly Simone offered at nine to one is the first to walk around. Alert Kitten is priced at nine to two. Second choice Hilltop Harmony. CJ's Flair stands to go off the favorite. Blue Collar Romance to complete the line. Stand by for a start. They're at the post, and they're off. For program 19 of 2020 at Fort Erie Racetrack, Alert Kitten steps out the best. Hilltop Harmony, Silly Simone along the inside. Then CJ's Flair and two more lengths under urging to catch up is Blue Collar Romance along the back stretch. It's a four wide scrap for the lead. Silly Simone, Alert Kitten. Hilltop Harmony is three wide. CJ's Flair was four wide and about four more lengths to Blue Collar Romance who is narrowing the gap. Finally, Hilltop Harmony is the Emerging out of the pack, quickly backing away with Silly Simone after the speed battle. Alert Kitten is still there. So is CJ's Flair. This Troika proceeds as the front vanguard on the turn. Hilltop Harmony trying to put away a stubborn Alert Kitten. CJ's Flair has been widest but has never given in. And now CJ's Flair is nose to nose with Hilltop Harmony. Alert Kitten is back in third. Blue Collar Romance fourth. Silly Simone now trails CJ's Flair. In the pink cap, takes the stretch lead after speed of 22 and 4, 46 and 3. Over the sloppy track, CJ's Flair waves good Tuesday afternoon to all rivals. CJ's Flair and Chris Husbands going to win it by wide open lengths. Hilltop Harmony fought the good fight with second best. Blue Collar Romance a closing third. Alert Kitten made some early speed and was fourth. As CJ's Flair wins the Tuesday opener at the fort in 120 and 4.
Winner's photographs will be taken back at the walking ring this Fort Erie program. CJ's Flair is returning victorious. The seven-year-old Bay Mare by Cactus Ridge from Casual Flair by Aptitude. Bred in Kentucky by Montecule Stable, had been owned and trained by Elliot Sullivan, and the winning ride to Chris Husband's. First win in three starts this year, 15th career win for CJ's Flair in the first. The six and a half furlongs on the sloppy track in 120 and four when posted official. One off as race favorite, 380 to win, 210 and 210 across. Hilltop Harmony 210s, Blue Collar Romance 270 to show. The exact of 480, the trifecta 1890, and the first race dollar superfecta 536 and 2, $17.65. We had a claim of the race winner from the first race. CJ's Flair taken for $3,000 out of the first race by new owner trainer Joe Humber. Joe Humber claims five CJ's Flair from the first race for $3,000. In race two, three SEAL Team two, two pounds over. Four, loquacious, one pound over. Steward Scratch of number five, Cape Nero. Race two from Fort Erie. The claiming field at a mile and 70 yards on the main track in the start of the early 20 cent pick four, 17 minutes to post.
Race two kicks off the early pick for a $4,500 climbing event for non-winners of three lifetime. It was originally scheduled for a mile on the turf, but since we are off the grass for the day, it'll be moved to a mile and 70 yards over the dirt. The five Cape Nero is out. So I'm down to two in here, the number three SEAL Team 2 and the two Prison Padre. SEAL Team 2 made the first start of 2020 since joining the Sharon Cicado Barn on the turf, resulted in a win, but since then has been on the dirt at six and six and a half furlongs and has been second best in both of them, never beaten by more than two lengths. Not sure about the distance for this one going long, especially based on that performance last year, but it was against tougher competition, was in for an $8,000 tag, now only $4,500 today. And I think with the recent performances, this one looks tough. Now the two prison Padre, he's interesting. I thought he might be able to step up on the turf based on that most recent performance while in for a $3,000 tag. But now I like him on the dirt because look at his races down at Tampa. He was fourth over a sloppy track after being shuffled pretty far back early on. Only had a few horses beat out of the gate. But I liked the effort after that. That resulted in a win going a mile and 40 over the dirt while in for an $8,000 tag. And the reason I like it is not only did he win, but he was closer to the pace. And in this race, I think with the sloppy track, you don't want to be far back. You want to be closer to the pace. And if they can do that today, he looks to have a shot. Good luck.
The riders are going up and they're on their way out for race two. There's Quality Brew leading out the race two post parade in Fort Erie. Trained by Louis Cappy for owner Lincoln Radhay and in the irons, Juan Crawford. Kirk Johnson to ride for Kenny Yang and Daryl Hosmatelli on two, Prison Padre. Seal Team two, number three, Brian Shane is up. Trained by Sharon Chicano for even Steven Stables. Loquacious, number four, conditioned by Armand Concessi, owned by Catherine Morissette, and the rider is Sunny Singh. Number five was a Stuart Scratch. Six is one pound sterling, trained by Cindy Musto for owner Mike Stoikopoulos, and hired to ride is Emil Ramsamy. The claiming field of race two will run a mile and 70 yards on the main track. Race two, off the turf. Mile and 70 yards on the main track. Start of the early 20 cent pick four. Starts a rolling pick three and rolling double. There's Superfecta, trifecta exact to win, place, and show. Race two coming up from Fort Erie.
The starting gate is in position for race two. Making their way up to the gate. Time running out for the race two wagers. They've reached the starting point, readying to step in. Quality Brew with two to one second choice status steps in. Prison Padre priced at five to two. Favored Seal Team Two. Loquacious. Last in is one pound sterling. Stand by for a start. Race two at the post. They're off for a mile and 70 yards on the main track. And it is SEAL Team 2, the favorite, immediately takes command. SEAL Team 2 is out front by two or three lengths. Brian Shane trying to get this one to come back to him a bit, and he's a bit of a headstrong runaway into the turn, opening up by five, six, seven, eight lengths. SEAL Team 2 won a strong early tempo there. Then Quality Brew, one pound sterling ducked to the inside. Loquation is just to the outside of Prison Padre. Over to the backstretch, and the field is now coming back to SEAL Team 2 after that big early speed display. And right along the inside, it's one one pound sterling up to join the leader and take a head lead. That's one pound sterling coming back to take the lead. SEAL Team 2 is taken under a harder rein. Then Quality Brew, Locatius, is running almost four wide. Prison Padre is back of the group, but only by about two more lengths. One pound sterling has taken the lead from favored SEAL Team 2. This one is way up in the air now. Then Quality Brew, Loquacious has been attending well, but out in four wide land, and Prison Padre has been trailing. The early fractions were 23 and 4 and 48 and 4, so 25 seconds. More moderate in the second quarter. This front cluster of four still separated. They're nose to nose. And here comes SEAL Team 2 back on for the lead. Loquacious has been running wide out around Quality Brew. One pound sterling is tired. Prison Padre is back of the group. It's SEAL Team 2 that takes the late stretch lead. Quality Brew, Loquacious is still plugging and chugging. And Quality Brew kicks in late. Quality Brew getting up. That's Quality Brew got the head bob from SEAL Team 2. And then Loquacious and Prison Padre with one pound sterling last to finish in 146 and 4.
One, three, four, and two posted from race two. Quality Brew posted first. Three, Seal Team Two posted second. Four, Loquacious posted third. Two, Prison Padre was fourth. One, three, four, and two posted unofficial. With a running time of 146 and four. There is Quality Brew returning from race two in Fort Erie. The four-year-old Bay Gelding by Milwaukee Brew from Quality Diamond by Quality Road. Bred in Ontario by Adana Springs. Now trained by Louis Cappy for owner Lincoln Radhay. The winning ride to Juan Crawford. The class-dropping Quality Crew Brew makes it his second win in three starts this year. Runs the mile in 70 yards in 146 and 4 when posted official. Here is a fourth race scratch not previously announced. From the Fort Erie fourth race to Marvell has become a stewards scratch. From the fourth race to Marvell, now a stewards scratch. In victory off at three to one quality brew, eight twenty, three forty and three dollars. Seal team two, two fifty and two twenty. Loquacious, five dollars to show. The exact to twenty one sixty, the trifecta, a hundred and sixty eight forty. The dollar superfecta, one three four and two, a hundred and twenty two dollars twenty five cents. And the program's first rolling double, sixteen dollars twenty cents. Now on display, the win photo of race two, showing number one, Quality Brew, to win by close to a head from number three, Seal Team Two. One over three, the race two win photo now posted.
Now on display the show photo of race two, showing number four, Loquacious, finishing third over number two, Prison Padre. Four over two in the show photo, now posted from race two. Here are the third race changes. One Lynch's Gimme, two pounds over. Two Milwa Mintaka Bell will race one pound over. The third race, start of this program's 20 cent pick five. 16 minutes to post time from Fort Erie Racetrack.
Race three is the start of the pick five. It's an allowance optional claiming event for fillies and mares. Set to go six furlongs on the dirt. My top selection is the number four, Snell Flicka. She's been quite impressive here at Fort Erie in general. I think the last time out over the turf, she had some excuses because if you look at her dirt performances, she's typically on the lead or pressing the pace setter, and she wasn't able to do that necessarily on the turf. She was beaten by six and a quarter in the end, and it was a tough group. I mean, looking at the winner, Auntie Catherine, she won a stakes race here last year, and she's been quite consistent so far this year. Both here at Fort Erie and Woodbine, so I think this is definitely a better spot for her just level-wise as well as surface because look at those two dirt performances this year. She was second in both of them. In her first start, she had the lead. She just missed in the end. About a girl was able to close from off the pace and beat her by just a neck. And then in that second dirt start, she faced Pachamama, who's now 3-for-3 three three at Fort Erie. has been a machine so far this season. She's not having to face her today, so for me, she is the top pick. Other ones to consider, the six Lil's turn. The John Sims barn has been extraordinary so far this meet. They've won half of their starts from 14. They picked up three other minor shares. It's really hard to ignore the barn. And looking at this one, made the debut here at Fort Erie on June 8th and won with ease, was able to close from off the pace, draw clear by two and a quarter. And then they shipped her up to Woodbine. They put her on the turf going long a mile and a 16th. And she outran her odds. She was 24 to 1 that day. She closed from basically last early on to just miss by two and a quarter lengths at a huge price, like I mentioned. So I think she's very versatile. She's had some good starts under her belt. So she's another one that's hard to ignore. And then finally, look to the Philly on the rail, the one Lynch's Gimme. This one has been second in her most recent effort here at Fort Erie, and it was only her second dirt start. She was able to just kind of rake throughout, but wasn't able to close the gap late, was beaten by three and a quarter lengths, but I think that's a great performance considering the level. It was an allowance event for non-winners of two lifetime, and I could see her today picking up a minor share against this field.
The riders have gone up and the horses are on their way to the track for race three in Fort Erie. Here's the field on Post Parade for race three in Fort Erie, led by Lynch's Gimme, number one. Owned and trained by Julie Mathis, and in the irons is Helen Venick. Two Mintaka Bell, partnered by Sunny Singh for trainer Ashley Burness and the ownership of Colebrook Farms. Romantic Bliss, number three, campaigning for Rockpile Stable, trained by Armand Concessi. The jockey is Pierre Mailhot. Snellflick is number four, racing for Gary Chidobiak with Kirk Johnson up. One Crawford is in the saddle for trainer Jennifer Davis and Big Boy Stable on five, Express Banking. Six is Lil's turn, racing for Sharon and John Sims with Melanie Pinto aboard. Field is on the track for race three. Starts to this program's 20 cent pick five. The 20 cent pick five starts on race three. There's a rolling pick three and rolling double, and there's superfecta, trifecta exact to win, place, and show. Race three coming up from Fort Erie.
The riders now requested to take their horses back into the chute to the six furlong starting point for race three. Riders requested to take their horses to the gate. Time running out for the 20 cent pick five and all race three wagers from Fort Erie. Lynch's gimme priced at four to one, first to step in. And Taco Bell offered at seven to one steps up. Fields long shot romantic bliss. Third choice Snell Flicka. Favorite Express Banking. And second choice Lil's Turn complete the line. Stand by for a start. Race three at the post. They're off, and a good beginning for all. Lil's turn jumped well, so did Snell Flicka, and right along the inside, Lynch's Gimme supplies the early speed. Lynch's Gimme out of there as expected with Helen Vanek, engineering a fast first fraction here. Snell Flicka prompting that one along, and then Lil's turn. Mintaka Bell is on the inside at the flank of Express Banking, and Romantic Bliss will be the last one to arrive into the turn. Lynch's Gimme and Snell Flicka have had at it, and running through into the gap there, Mintaka Bell seizing the moment for the rail run. Mintaka Bell surges through along the inside to go right up and confront Lynch's Gimme and Express Banking has come on by. Snell Flicka got the worst of that, is still out wide. Lil's turn yet to run. Three more lengths to Romantic Bliss as the trailer and the complexion totally changes to the top of the stretch. It's Express Banking on the outside, overtaking Mintaka Bell. Lil's turn starts a run out on the grandstand side. Express Banking is clear in the stretch by two. The grandstand side danger is Lil's turn still closing and closing. Express Express Banking is asked to dig in one more time. Express Banking and Lil's turn. Express Banking to win by a head. Lil's turn, a hard closing second. Snell Flicka was third. Romantic Bliss was fourth. Express Banking and Juan Crawford strikes again with the race favorite in the third, 112 and two fifths.
five, six, four, and three is posted. Five, six, four, three. The running times review twenty three seconds. The half in forty six and two. And the six for a long running time, one twelve and two from race three when posted official. with the sunshine now breaking through. The third race winner is back for the photograph. That's Express Banking. Four-year-old Bay Philly by Central Banker from Expressly Yours by Big Brown. Bred in Ontario by Erica, Janine, and James Everett. Trained by Jennifer Davis for Big Boy Stable. Consecutive winning mounts on the program for Juan Crawford. It's the second win of this year for Express Banking. Running the six furlongs in race three, one twelve and two. Three sixty, two forty, and two ten across on Express Banking. Lulz turn three eighty and two forty. Snell Flick at two twenty. The exact at twelve ninety. The trifecta twenty four seventy. The dollar superfecta five six four and three. A hundred and sixty eight dollars and a nickel. The rolling daily double thirty two forty. And this program's first dollar pick three, twenty one dollars and fifty cents. Be sure to check out hpibet.com today. You will get $100 when you bet $100. By joining hpibet.com, you'll be receiving the HPI Bet Rewards Program. You can watch up to four tracks at the same time and wager on almost 500 tracks from around the world. With your membership in hpibet.com, you can wager online or on site at any time. Join for free today. Be sure to check it out. HPIBet.com.
Here are the race four changes. Number two, Marvell, Stewards, Scratch. Three, win, lose, or straw, three pounds over. Number four, Madame Bovary, two pounds over. Six, Sweet Society, two pounds over. Seven, Vin Pearl Valentine, Steward Scratch. Race four starts this program's late 20 cent pick four. 18 minutes to post time from Fort Erie Racetrack.
Race 4 is a maiden claiming event for fillies and mares, originally scheduled for the turf, but it'll move to the main track at a distance of a mile and 70 yards. My third pick in here, number 7, Vin Pearl Valentine is a scratch, so I'm down to my top 2, the number 1, No Ring, and the 6, Sweet Society. Looking at No Ring, this one made the debut up at Woodbine in for a $10,000 claiming price. And finished sixth, only beat two runners in there, but didn't have a clean break or the best of breaks in general. Kind of broke outward. And I think with a cleaner break, this one should be in contention. And that's what she lacked last time out. She's going to make that second start for trainer Kevin Attard, who doesn't ship down here often. Only has one starter here so far this meet, which resulted in a second place finish. And then this one will also get first time LASIK. So I see a lot of upside with this runner. And I like that Juan Crawford's aboard. He's had a great meet so far, winning at about 20%. The Six Sweet Society, this one's a Mike DiPaolo runner, made the debut while in for a $15,000 tag at Woodbine and really didn't show much at all, trailered throughout that event and was well beaten. But, you know, the barn isn't necessarily known for Maiden's second time out. But I think this one might be okay over the dirt. We've seen some of these offspring of Society's chairman handle it quite nicely here so far this season. This one figures to be one of the favorites come post time. From Fort Erie, there has been a sixth race scratch not previously announced. From the Fort Erie sixth race, late vet scratch of one, see you at the finish line. From the sixth race in Fort Erie, late vet scratch of one, see you at the finish line.
Riders are going up and they're on their way out for race four. Here is No Ring leading the fourth race post spread, trained by Kevin Attard for Alan Bill O'Welling, Juan Crawford hired to ride. Number two is a Stewart Scratch. Three is Win, Lose, or Straw. Sunny Singh aboard. Darwin Benak trained for JWS Farm. Madame Bovary is number four, campaigning for Luthia Shirley with Brian Shane. Hippie Chick is number five, trained by Francine Villeneuve for TNT Racing. Chris Husbands is in the saddle. Sweet Society, number six, conditioned by Mike DiPaolo for Phoenix Racing. Emil Ramsamy aboard. Number seven is Stuart Scratch. Eight Comet completes the field. Trained by Des Maynard for Andrew Heward. And the jockey is Devin Johnson. They're on the track for the fourth race. Maiden claiming event at a mile and 70 yards on the main track. Start of the late 20 cent pick four. Starts a rolling pick three and rolling double. There's Superfecta, Trifecta, Exacta, Win Place and Show. Race four coming up in Fort Erie.
Starting gate is in position at the mile and 70 yard point for race four. The horses are reaching the starting point. Time running out for the late 20 cent pick four and fourth race wagers from Fort Erie. Readying to load. No ring with nine to five favoritism. Respect is first into the gate. No ring to be flanked by win, lose, or straw. Madame Bovary priced at nine to two. Favored hippie chick. Sweet society among the choices. Calm it completes the line. Stand by for a start. Race four. They're off. And they've all come out pretty well there in good order. Hippie Chick is going to be forwardly placed. Comet from the outside. No ring and win, lose, or straw are right there moving into the first turn. Then Madame Bovary. And to the rear of the field running out wide is Sweet Society. They'll round the turn in a tightly compacted group here. No ring on short lead. Hippie Chick running on the outside. Madame Bovary. Calmest is out wide there. Second to last was Sweet Society and shuffled out by two more lengths is win, lose, or straw. So they'll reach over to the back stretch after a front quarter on the sloppy surface in 24 seconds. Running up front, no ring inside, and Sweet Society on the outside. Calmet is running out there widest of all on the flank of Madame Bovary and trying to surge on through Sweet Society. Sweet Society now pinched out and shuffled back, and the trailer by about 10 more lengths losing momentum, and apparently all chance will be win, lose, or straw. No ring has had a long battle with Hippie Chick going into the turn. Running right there, third has been Mad M. Bovary. Two more lengths to Comet still attending. Dropping back was Sweet Society going into the turn. Win, lose, or straw is far back with no chance. No ring all alone suddenly for Juan Crawford at head stretch after middle speed of 49 seconds and three quarters in 14 and four. No ring through the stretch. Never really going away was Hippie Chick still holding second and then Madame Bovary and out wide Comet is up into the front four. But no ring has kicked clear again in the stretch and seals the victory going best of all to win by a good margin here close to 10. Hippie Chick stayed for second. Madame Bovary was third, and Comet was fourth, with Sweet Society fifth. No ring, much the best there. In 146 and four.
One five four and eight is posted unofficial from race four. The running times recap. The quarter twenty four, the half forty nine, three quarters one fourteen and four. The mile rating one forty two and two, and the mile and seventy yards in totality one forty six and four. Stewards have posted the inquiry sign examining the racing action into the first turn involving numbers one and three. The unofficial winner implicated in the inquiry, stewards review of the run into the first turn involving numbers one and three. Please hold all tickets. Now on display, the stewards live video review.
Result of the stewards' inquiry and video review, no changes. Stewards find insufficient reason for any changes. From the race four finish order, posted results will stand. No ring as even money favorite, 420, 240, and 210 across. Hippie check, 260 and 210. Madame Bovary, 230. The exact to 720, the trifecta, 1470. The dollar superfecta, 154 and 8, 5960. The rolling daily double, $10.90. And the dollar pick three ended on the fourth race, $28.25. No changes in the Fort Erie fifth race. Race five will go as programmed. 16 minutes to post time.
Race five, we have an $8,000 climbing event, five furlongs over the main track, and on paper, there's a ton of horses that want the lead. I did land on the number one midnight snack attack because looking at his performances this year, yes, he's got early foot, but he's got determination, and that's the big thing that sticks out for me. He's really vicious down to the wire, and he'll battle back as hard as he can, and both of his performances this year, he's had to do that. In the first start of the year, he kind of locked up with Flashman all the way around the track, but he was able to get the lucky end of the photo to win, and then most recently, they stretched him out to six furlongs from that five furlong win, and he handled it with ease. He was actually able to open up on the field in the end to draw clear by over two lengths. I just like that Helen Vanek has decided to climb back aboard, had other options in here, including the very fast number six, Big Band Benny, so that gives me extra confidence in him today. Another one I'll use is the four, Grin and Bear. No stranger to four deer. He has five wins from 15 starts, 13 for 15 in the money over the dirt. This year, he's been in two four and a half furlong events. He started with a third this year, most recently with second. And that's been a little different for him because he hasn't made the lead. You can look at his other starts. He typically finds himself on the lead, but he's still done a nice job rating. Going to get a little extra distance today, and I certainly think that should help him. Finally, I mentioned the number six, Big Band Benny, is the logical speed horse. I think he might be slightly quicker than some in here, but not necessarily, especially at the five furlong distance. I think others might try to lock up with him early, and that'll be key because in his two starts this year, uh, the most recent starts, I should say, at the four and a half furlong distance, he's been able to shake clear out of the gate and set things to be to his liking, and that's why he's prevailed. I really have to think other riders in here are going to be tactical and try to pressure him early on because that's about the best chance of beating him in general. Riders up is the call. They're on their way to the track for race five in Fort Erie.
It's Midnight Snack Attack to lead the Race 5 Post Parade in Fort Erie. Helen Vanek riding for Des Maynard. Optic is number two, conditioned by Doug Carter, co-owner with Scott Simmons. Neil Ramsamy, riding partner of two Optic. Ishmael Mascara is in to ride for Willie Armata and Alpine Stable on three, front nine. Grin and Bear is number four, trained by Joe Humber for Robert Elkins. The rider is Chris Husbands. Big Classic is number five, trained by Joe Humber for Joy Elkins and in the irons, Melanie Pinto. Six is Big Band Benny, trained by Chris Jolene for Leanne Willat. And riding partner is Pierre Mailhoff. The claiming field to run five furlongs in the fifth race. Start of this program's final 20 cent pick three. There's Superfecta, Daily Double, Trifecta Exact, to win place and show. Race five coming right up from Fort Erie. Starting gate has taken place at the five furlong point in preparation for race five.
Your attention, we have a post-time scratch by order of the on-track veterinarian of number five, Big Classic. Post-time scratch of number five, Big Classic, from race five. Limited wagering time still available. Post-time scratch of five, Big Classic. There will be a refund or exchange available of race five tickets involving five, Big Classic, a post-time scratch. Wagering still available on race five from Fort Erie. Five big classic removed from the wagering cycle. Last call now for race five wagers. The horses are approaching the gate. And they're readying to step in. Six to one offering Optic is first to reach the gate. Front nine with five to two respect stepping in. Grinning Bear is loaded. Being shown five, six to five respect, Grinning Bear. So just the inside and outside gates to go, numbers one and six. Big Ben Benny. Midnight Snack Attack completes the line. Stand by for a start. Race five at the post. They're off. From the outside, it's Big Ben Benny that's going to beat them all over to the rail. Big Ben Benny with blazing early speed. Then Optic is on the outside of Midnight Snack Attack. Running out wide, that's Grin and Bear. And front nine was pinched out and runs from the rear of the field. Big Ben Benny is going to try to carry him all the way. Optic is second. That's Grin and Bear on the outside of Midnight Snack Attack. And three more lengths to front nine as the trailer. Big Ben Benny. 
22 seconds over the track, rated sloppy, and brings him into the top of the stretch. It's Big Ben Benny over Optic, and they turn for the money. Front nine has started the motor running on the grandstand side, along with Grin and Bear, and Midnight Snack Attack is coming down on the fence. Suddenly tiring Big Ben Benny, Midnight Snack Attack looked him in the eye, went right on by, and draws off to win. Under a smart Helen Vanek ride, Midnight Snack Attack. Optic was second, Grin and Bear was third, Big Ben Benny tired fourth, front nine was last to finish. As Midnight Snack Attack wins again in Fort Erie, the five furlongs in 59 seconds. One, two, four, and six is posted. Running times recap, 22 seconds. The half in 45 and four. The five furlongs in 59 seconds flat for midnight snack attack. Well, a different method this time from back of the lead, but the result is the same. Undefeated in three starts in Fort Erie this year. Midnight Snack Attack back for another victory photograph. The Dark Bear Brown, six-year-old gelding by silent name. From Rice Pudding by Donna Rail Court. Bred in Ontario by Boxero Farm. Owned and trained by Des Maynard. 
And again for the winning ride, Helen Vanek. Midnight Snack Attack. Runs the five furlongs on the sloppy track, 59 seconds flat. It's official. 990 on the win ticket, 410 to place, 280 to show. Optic was 470 and 290. Grin and Bear 240. The exact 3790. The trifecta 9130. The dollar superfecta 124 and 6. $110.35. There was a consolation double of 1 and 5 because of the post time scratch of 5 Big Classic. That consolation double of 1 and 5, 450. The regular daily double of 1 and 1, $30.80. Rolling pick 3, $20.40. The early pick 4, $212.70. For the dollar pick 4, ended on race 5. Be sure to catch our weekly highlights and replay show post time from Fort Erie Racetrack on Your TV Niagara every Thursday at 8 p.m. Your TV Niagara found at Cochico Cable Channel 700 in Fort Erie, Niagara Falls, Font Hill, Welland, and the entire Niagara Region Cable Channel 700. It's post time from Fort Erie Racetrack, our weekly highlights and replay package show on Your TV Niagara every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Here are the race six changes. Number one, see you at the finish line, Vet Scratch. Six, summer retreat, racing two pounds over. The sixth race will start this program's last rolling double. And on the sixth race, Superfecta, trifecta exact of win place and show. 16 minutes to post time. Race 6 coming up from Fort Erie Racetrack.
36 is our biggest field of the day. A group of $4,500 claimers set to go a five and a half furlongs over the dirt. Looking at the runners in here, I do think the Six Summer Retreat could have the pace advantage as this one has shown early foot in the past. But I did go to the number five marriage counselor who has two on the board finishes so far here at Fort Erie this season. He's added to his record. He's yet to miss the board in general from five starts. I think obviously his first race back off the layoff wasn't impressive, but it was over the tapita up at Woodbine. So I kind of draw a line through that performance. Then he has a second and most recently a third where he's beaten by just under four lengths. I could see him improving. He's dropping for a lower tag today, excuse me. And looking at his performances in the past, he has faced tougher competition and done quite well. So we'll see what he can do fourth start this year. Also, I'll look to the number six summer retreat. This one I mentioned has early foot and last time out he was able to make the lead and prevail in the end going six and a half furlongs. Today cutting back, I think that should suit him just fine and look at him when he makes the lead early on. He's very dangerous. He gets bold on the front end, is able to kind of draw off by open lengths and I think if he's able to do that again today he'll be extremely dangerous. I also will finally turn to the number two, Mr. Chang who's no stranger here at Fort Erie. He's been on the racetrack quite often. Look at his performances here. 30 starts, 7 wins, 12 runner-up placings, and then 4 thirds. He just absolutely loves the dirt surface. And with that said, I think he's had some excuses so far this season. You look at that first effort, it was over the turf. He's not a turf horse. I think they just wanted to kind of see what they were working with this season. The next time out, he faced a tough group. And then, you know, in the following start, he found himself at a level where he can handle that 62.50 claiming price. And he was second to Augusto B, who's been a machine this, so far this year. So I think that's a really great effort from him. And then last time out, he didn't have his usual rider aboard, and it didn't pan out for him the way that they would have hoped. So I'd like to see that Pierre Melhot has opted for him in this spot. That gives me some confidence. And he's just simply one that's hard to toss here over the dirt. Good luck.
Here's a late scratch from the sixth race, not previously announced. Nine Little Deuce Coop has become a vet scratch. Vet scratch of nine Little Deuce Coop from the sixth race. The riders are going up, and the horses are on their way to the track. Numbers one and nine are now scratched from the sixth race. One and nine are out. Introducing the field on post parade for the sixth race from Fort Erie, number one was a vet scratch. Here's Mr. Chang, number two, trained by Ken Elbu for Sam Pissero, and in the irons, Pierre de Melhot. Y'all have a nice day. Number three is conditioned by Barrington Cito for Radcliffe Stable. Mark Lee Buchanan rides. Been waiting number four is partnered by Sunny Singh, trained by Armand Concessi for Rockpile Stable. Merge counselor number five, trained by Dale DeRusso for Jim Schler, and in the irons, Kirk Johnson. Next on the post parade is Seven Belder with Melanie Pinto up, trained by Claudia Rabstein for Zig John Grinsteins. Six is Summer Retreat. Helen Vanek riding for Dave and Julie Mathis. Number eight is Fill in the Blank. Trained by Danny Yu for Bushlot Farm. Hired to ride Chris Husbands. Numbers one and nine are vet scratches from the sixth race. Wagering opportunities this event, the program's last rolling double with Superfecta, Trifecta Exacta. Win place and show opportunities on the Fort Erie sixth race.
Wagering open a few moments longer on the sixth race. Late vet scratches of one. See you at the finish line. And nine, Little Deuce Coop. The starting gate is taking position at the five and a half furlong point in preparation for the sixth in Fort Erie. Riders are now under instruction to take their horses to the gate for the sixth race. They've reached the gate. Bean waiting, taking five to one action, is first into the gate. Tepid three to two favorite, marriage counselor went in. Long shot Belder. Fill in the blank in double digits while loading. Solid second choice summer retreat. Just a couple to go. Mr. Chang walked right in. And the gray, y'all have a nice day. Stand by for a start, race six at the post. They're off, fill in the blank, looks to beat the field out of there. Y'all have a nice day, summer retreat and Belder flashing speed. Mr. Chang is up into the front five, then been waiting. 
The favorite Merge Counselor has left in seventh and last position. Summer Retreat cut loose to lead it and joined along the inside by Y'all Have a Nice Day. Balder running three wide. Fill in the blank is four wide. Mr. Chang has come on into the front five. Three more likes to Bean Waiting second to last. And Marriage Counselor has a ton of work to do to try to win it from back there last. Summer Retreat and Y'all Have a Nice Day. Fill in the blank is moving up into third. Balder is fourth. Mr. Chang gets a rail run up into the front five and may have more to offer. Summer Retreat is first to turn for Helen Vanek, 22 and 1, 45 and 2. Summer Retreat trying to get home. Fill in the blank. Y'all have a nice day. Mr. Chang is there in between horses. Summer Retreat and Helen Vanek are almost there to win it. Summer Retreat all alone in front. Y'all have a nice day, second. Fill in the blank was third. It was close for fourth. Mr. Chang along the inside with Bean waiting. None were going to catch Summer Retreat, though. Much the best there. The five and a half panels in 104 and four. Six, three, eight, and two is posted as the superfecta of race six in Fort Erie. Six, three, eight, and two. There's the winner of the sixth race unofficially, Summer Retreat, returning for the victory photograph. The Dark Bay or Brown four-year-old gelding by Court Vision from Vermont Summer by Ellen's Prospect, bred in Ontario by Joey G. Thoroughbreds. Now campaigned by Julie and David Mathis. It's a round trip to the winner circle for rider Helen Vanek. Back in the fifth race with Midnight Snack Attack. Here in the sixth with Summer Retreat. Helen Vanek rocketing up the rider standings here in Fort Erie the past two weeks. It's official.
8.30 on the win ticket by Summer Retreat. 4.80 and 4.10. You all have a nice day. 12.70 and 7.90. Fill in the blank. 5.90 to show. The exacta. $99 even. The trifecta. 6.3 and 8 for $2. $869.40. The dollar superfecta of race six, six three eight and two, one thousand eight hundred eighty one dollars and eighty five cents. There was a consolation double because of the post time scratch of nine little deuce coupe nine seventy. The regular double forty one forty. The pick three ended on the sixth race seventy six dollars and seventy five cents. Be sure to catch our weekly highlights and replay show every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. on Your TV Niagara. Your TV Niagara founded cable channel 700 on the local Kojiko system in Fort Erie, Niagara Falls, and the entire Niagara region. It's post time from Fort Erie Racetrack every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. on Your TV Niagara, cable channel 700 in the region. The fourth place photograph now posted from the sixth race, showing number two, Mr. Chang, finishing fourth against number four, Bean Waiting, who is fifth. We have four stewards scratches from the seventh and final race. Three Giovanna Ponti, five Henson's Girl, six Ennio Schiller, seven She's Ten the Hard Way, stewards scratches from the seventh race. Seventh race wagering now restricted to win and exacta. Win and exacta only on race seven. This important announcement concerning the jackpot high five carryover it will move on in its entirety to the last race next Monday, August 10th. Next Monday, August 10th, the final race will carry the jackpot high five carryover, $77,230 to next Monday. Seventh race is off the turf, will be contested at six and a half furlongs on the main track. Race seven at six and a half furlongs on the main track.
race seven will end today's card. It's a three thousand dollar claiming event, originally scheduled for seven furlongs on the turf, but will be moved to six and a half furlongs over the main track. Unfortunately, there are a lot of scratches, so we only have three runners left. So we'll go through them top to bottom. The number one, Our Petunia, was the post time favorite last time out, while in for a four thousand dollar tag. She failed to fire. Written was able to pick up a win. We haven't seen this one in some time. It's also switched barns. But looking at the record over the dirt, has a strong record, but obviously so far in these most recent starts this year, she's been disappointing. The two I miss you is actually my top pick. I really like this one on the turf, but on the dirt, she's just fine. You can see her last race was over the dirt. She was fourth behind Orphan Queen, beaten by nine lengths. But in other races over the dirt, for example, her first start of the year, she faced nine winners of one on the year, managed to finish third, was beaten by just two and a quarter lengths behind Dixie Brew and Capture Your Heart. She has a strong dirt record here at Fort Erie. I think she'll sit just off the pace. And finally, our last runner is the four, Glorious Freedom for trainer Elliot Sullivan. This one was sixth last time out on the turf, beaten by less than three lengths, but over the dirt two starts back. This one picked up her third lifetime win. She was able to sit just a length or two off the pace setters and close late to draw off by nearly two lengths. And I think she's probably the logical other top contender in here. I think I need to see more from the number one, Art Petunia, but I did go to the two, I Miss You. I think she'll offer more value than the four, Glorious Freedom, but she might have the benefit because she seems to be a little bit closer to the pace early on.
The riders are up. They're on their way out to the track for race seven. On this event, win and exacta wagering only. The jackpot high five carries in its entirety to the final race next Monday, August 10th. Over $77,230. The jackpot high five carryover in its entirety goes to next Monday's final race. In the seventh race, one hour Petunia races with inserts. Add inserts, one hour Petunia. Arpetunia number one for the seventh race. Campaigning for Howard Keane with Juan Crawford. One Arpetunia races with inserts. Two I Miss You, partnered by Brad Wilson for owner and trainer Stephen Cathcart. Completing the field is Glorious Freedom for. Conditioned by Elliot Sullivan for Bruno Schickadans and in the irons, Chris Husbands. From this event, numbers three, five, six, and seven, Stewart's Scratches. The seventh race to be contested at six and a half furlongs on the main track, win and exact a wagering only on the seventh.
field is called to the gate for the seventh race. Last call now for seventh race wagers in Fort Erie. They've reached the starting point, readying to load. Our Petunia priced at nine to five. I miss you, very slightly favored for Brad Wilson at six to five. Glorious freedom. Just a tick above that. Stand by for a start. Race seven, and they're off. And they've all come out together. Our Petunia protecting the inside lane. Glorious Freedom going to run up on the outside. And I Miss You is going to measure them from two more lengths back in third. For the run along the backstretch, it's Our Petunia inside and Glorious Freedom to match strides on the outside. I Miss You has three, four lengths to make up back there now in the trailing position. The opening quarter went in an honest enough 23 seconds over the sloppy track. Our Petunia, Glorious Freedom go together. Separated a length and a quarter now, though, as our Petunia draws out. For Juan Crawford, looking for his fourth of the day on that final turn. Glorious Freedom back second. And about uh, six, seven lengths back now to I Miss You, lagging off back in third. So it's going to be a stretch run away for our Petunia. After running the front half in 46 and 2, our Petunia is first to turn. Glorious Freedom is going to come under some left handed urging and starts to make up some ground on the outside. Our Petunia, Glorious Freedom, and I Miss You in the stretch. Our Petunia going on with it. Carrying Juan Crawford to his fourth of the day in Fort Erie. Our Petunia showed the short way home over Glorious Freedom. And here's I Miss You, last to finish. 120, one fifth for the six and a half furlongs. Our Petunia all the way in the seventh.
Here's the winner of the seventh race returning. It's our Petunia. Four-year-old Bay Philly by two honor and serve from Dundalk Dancer by City Zip. Bred in Kentucky by Kelly Holland. Recently, a private purchase of trainer Howard Keene, Juan Crawford notches his fourth winning ride of the day, earlier the natural hat trick in races two, three, and four. And here in the finale with our Petunia. She was first to run the six and a half furlongs in 120 and one fifth. That's official. The win ticket return was 480. And the exact of one and four, seven dollars even. The final rolling double, 2560. The last pick three, 7510. The late dollar pick four, $229.60, and this program's dollar pick five, $656.15. The jackpot high five carryover, $77,230, carries over in its entirety to the final race next Monday, August 10th. Our live racing schedule right through to the end of the meet in mid-October. We come to you each Monday and Tuesday at 1.10 p.m. first post with the pre-race coverage on the air each race day at 12.35 p.m. Eastern. That's the Fort Erie live racing schedule for the entire 2020 meet, concluding October 13th. Become a member today and get $100 when you bet $100. Membership includes the HPI Bet Rewards Program, the ability to watch four tracks at the same time. You can wager on almost 500 tracks from around the world, and you can wager online or on site at any time. Check it out. Join for free today, hpibet.com. The weekly highlights and replay show Post time from Fort Erie Racetrack on Your TV Niagara every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Your TV is cable channel 700 on the local Cochico system for Fort Erie, Niagara Falls, and the Niagara region. Thursdays at 8 p.m. Post time from Fort Erie Racetrack on Your TV Niagara. For the live stream, the replays, racing schedule, statistics, the Ashley Mayu tip sheet under the betting tab, and much more, now all live in high definition. Be sure to check out FortErieRacing.com. Now on behalf of our horse people, the television broadcast production team, management and staff, thanks for being with us for Live Racing 2020 from Fort Erie Racetrack. When racing resumes next Monday, August 10th at 1.10 p.m., the jackpot high five carryover is $77,230 to next Monday's final race. We hope you have a great week ahead and hope to see you next Monday. Always available for your convenience at FortErieRacing.com. Good afternoon from Fort Erie Racetrack.